What is up everyone, it's CMG here. We finally have some news to go on regarding Overwatch 2. And it has something to do with a rework for Moira. So this piece of news comes in the form of a blog post that was posted up recently, basically titled, Designing Heroes for a New Era. Now this goes into a few details surrounding a bunch of iterations that they have discussed on how they can change Moira's kit and how some of these iterations while they may not work with Moira currently or through playtesting, some or most of them are added to possible future heroes we could see in Overwatch 2 going forwards. Now we'll go through what was said in the post, but before we do that, I just want to remind everyone once again, if you like this idea for a video and you want to see more in the future, then go ahead and click on the subscribe button, send a comment, like the video, and then turn on your notifications. It really does help me out a great deal. For those of you that have done it already, thank you. I appreciate you. Right then, so according to this blog, there are a total of three iterations that the devs over at Blizzard have tinkered with to make Moira feel different in Overwatch 2, most of which have been discussed in huge depth and as a result have been written off, but at the same time developed a new idea for an iteration that would be better suited to a kit. So let's take a quick look at these iterations and see for ourselves what they all mean. So. The first iteration that they've mentioned here is Pain Converter. Now, before we go into detail, I want to uh, let everybody know, I'm not going to read all the article, so if you want to read the article for yourselves, I'll provide a link in the description below. So yes, let's talk about the first iteration, Pain Converter. So according to this blog post, it says, One of the first changes the team thought to make was referred to as Pain Converter. This ability was a damage reduction that, when cast on allies, would enable Moira to convert the damage she mitigated to fill up her healing bar. Pain Converter would cancel some of the damage an ally received while simultaneously allowing her to heal allies with Biotic Grasp, massively increasing her target's survivability. So I guess you could say this is some kind of reverse Biotic Grasp. So if, let me just figure this out. So if, if, you're, if an ally is receiving damage, then by using a biotic grasp this is completely disregarded and it's just basically it allows your ally to just stay alive yeah so this iteration didn't stick because of a few issues pain converter felt like other existing abilities like baptiste's immortality field yeah that makes sense that prevent teammates from dying the ability also felt too situational because you got most value from using it on the tank and not on teammates getting dove or flanked. So yeah, if you remember a while ago uh, in Overwatch League or in esports, there was a, a very, very overpowered team called GOATS where you used three tanks and three supports. Now, Moira was a massive responsibility in that team composition and, well, using three tanks, making sure that all of those are alive. Like, Moira was way too powerful in that uh, composition. Lastly, Moira already has a complete kit and we struggled to find room where we could add another ability. We tried binding Pain Converter to the reload key, but this felt awkward since Moira wasn't reloading a weapon. Yeah, so th th this is a real problem for Moira is that she doesn't... All she does is throw out orbs. She can't actually reload. So <laughs> th that's a bit of a problem that they need to figure out. There was a brief iteration where players could activate it by holding down primary and secondary fire simultaneously, but the key binding added a level of clunkiness to a kit. So if I can just convert this into a controller because I play on console, I'd have to hit R1 and R2 together? Okay, yeah that would be quite weird. Moira frequently switches between primary and secondary fire, so the ability would often accidentally trigger. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Pain Converter would be a little bit problematic because of the fact that, you know, there's so many different abilities you can think of that are very similar. So, yeah, I, I don't think this would work uh, for Moira. So let's move on to the next uh, iteration uh, called Purge and Nullify. Now, the first paragraph that I want to read here, well, this is one's kind of long, so I'll put it on the screen. But yeah, this is, uh, this is some really interesting information. So the next two abilities, Purge and Nullify, were two separate iterations that were both bound to damage biotic orb. Purge was heavily in influenced by World of Warcraft's Shaman class. Now, I've not played World of Warcraft, and my sister does, but I don't. I don't know what Shaman class is, so I, I can't relate to that. It would remove buffs from enemies. So I can understand what this means. So imagine if 
Genji is using his nano blade. So basically he's been given a nano boost by Anna and he goes in with blade. If Moira uses Polge and Nullify on him, it's no better than if he would do blade himself and he's not been nanoed. So there's a serious damage reduction or damage output reduction, I should say. Since this type of ability fits with Moira's personality, we started thinking about what buffs would be removed. We considered Purge cancelling Anno's nano boost, I just said that, on or Soldier 76's sprint. So even if uh, Soldier 76, because Soldier 76 uh, uses sprint as a way of getting away from a situation. So if you was to use that on him, he wouldn't be able to sprint away or he'd be sprinting very slowly. But anyway, let's carry on. But it wasn't super intuitive about what else should be removed. For example, Dragon Blade gives a small speed boost to Genji while active. I did not know that. I didn't know that Genji had a speed boost. Of all the times I've known Overwatch, I didn't know that Genji had a speed boost whenever he used Dragon Blade. That's kind of interesting. And it was not clear if something like this would be removed by Purge. It was difficult to tell which abilities would be removed with Purge, so the ability was archived and the concept behind it led to a creation of Nullify. So is, that what, is this exactly what I was telling you before about Purge? Like, what they would do is they would take that ability Purge and put it to one side. So if, for instance, they decide to work on a new hero, they might actually add the Purge ability once it becomes even more of a potent usage for that ability, if, if that makes any sense. That's interesting to know about. Nullify came to life when we started to reign in the scope of Purge. Nullify negated damage reduction, damage boosts, and movement speed while active. For example, it would suppress the effects of nano boost for a few seconds. The team's goal with Nullify was to come to a consensus about what types of abilities should be suppressed. Okay, so basically, I don't know, like, I don't know how you would use this for an ability. So if you was to, even if it was like some kind of ultimate or something like that, you'd, you'd literally plant this on a character or use it in, in an instance. Maybe, maybe it'd be like a passive ability or something like that. If you're in this sort of, if you're in proximity with somebody who's currently using uh, Nano, for example, and then you put it on Gen, let's say, let's say you're, you're throwing your Anna and you're throwing out a Nano boost onto Genji, who goes in. If you're in proximity with the enemy Anna while she's doing that, that kind of negates the damage input for at least for a few seconds. I don't know. I mean, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't notice anything, but it would be like some kind of thing that was, you know, lingering or something like that. That's really interesting. Uh, yeah. So one way the team attempted to add depth to nullify was by enabling Moira to stop her orbs in place, creating areas of healing or nullification for teammates and or enemies. So basically, by using this, by just by talking about this, what you would do with Moira in this case is use her as a way of locking down areas on a map so that uh you know if you was to throw out an orb or, so or something of that ilk the team wouldn't be able to do anything in that area so basically you're, you're locking down that area to stop people from to, to from healing effectively uh, and then just killing people off that's kind of interesting another iteration of nullify dealt extra damage to overhealth. so if lucio used sound barrier in nullify's range his shields would be destroyed rapidly. Wow, okay. That's interesting. This change felt tacked on and difficult to understand, so overhealth damage was eventually removed. However, it still wasn't super obvious what Nullify did while playing a match. You only noticed it for the most part if you had damage boosts, reduction, or speed on yourself when it applied. Otherwise, you couldn't, fe you couldn't really feel the ability, especially compared to something extremely visceral like Sleep Dart. This thinking eventually led to the conception of a third new ability, which we'll be talking about right now. Weaken. Okay, so just by just by saying the word weaken, it kind of like works well with Moira because I mean I think one of her voice lines when she's uh, well if you if you're if you're familiar with Overwatch One and the way she uses biotic graphs right now, uh, if you're if you've connected it onto an enemy, she, she just literally says you grow weak. So the word weaken is kind of like similar to the way Moira's personality works. So yeah, let's talk about the, the, the iteration weaken. Weaken is the current iteration the team is working on. This ability begins charging 
when reload is pressed once. So again, we wouldn't want to talk about what we were talking about reload earlier. I mean, she doesn't have a reload because she uses two orbs. So how on earth is that going to work? <laughs> That's kind of like contradicting yourself here. Uh, causing Moira to build up energy in her hand. Okay, so she's... Let's, let's just say, for example, that she's got like a hand that she's charging up. After Weaken is charged fully, I'm assuming it's going to be charged fully, Moira can fire a projectile that significantly lowers attack and healing output. So what is this? Is she going to sort of plant just one little thing? Like a... like what is it, What's it going to be? Like a... She just throws it out and it sticks to an enemy and it weakens them? She can choose when to fire this projectile or hold it at the cost of not being able to use her primary or secondary fire at the same time. Oh, okay. So that's kind of like um, a balance change then. So you can't use your primary and secondary while it's fully charged. Okay, that's, that's kind of cool. We are considering something with a small projectile size like Anna Sleep Dart. Oh my goodness. So there's a lot of skill involved in this. When we have an ability that requires players to manage things like timing, ultimate tracking, or accuracy, we have more room to make something that is going to feel both impactful to use and fair play and fair to play against. Skill shots are broadly more counterable, which is another reason we can make them powerful in game. So the more powerful it is, the more difficult to use it, the easier it is to counter. Basically, that's what that means. We, like Sleep Dart, even though we are removing a lot of crowd control from Overwatch 2 because it requires more to effectively use the non-skill shot abilities. So, the, yeah, basically what this means is, and I'm sure a lot of people have said it before, Overwatch 2 is not going to be based around a team game, but it's going to be more like individual plays, individual skills. It's more team deathmatch kind of a game than it is just throwing down shields. Because who the hell would who the hell wants to shoot shields, right? <laughs> Nobody wants to shoot shields anymore. So there you go. The team played around with the idea of attaching a passive effect to our alternate fire, but found that we would have to lower the overall potency due to the damage beam's high uptime. Weaken won't have the same uptime, so we have more room to turn it into a playmaking, game-changing ability. Very much similar to, you know. Genji Blade, it's very difficult to use it. Um, Sleep Dart, it's very difficult to use it. So it's more like um, a tactical way. So if you see, if you're seeing somebody that's being really effective in game, that's when you kind of like think, right, I'm going to use this to stop them from doing what they're doing. Uh, it won't feel free to land, and Moira will have to manage timing, positioning, and cast direction to successfully use Weaken. That's understandable. We aren't sure if this iteration will make it into the game because we are still testing within the team, but it does look promising. Okay, well, I hope. Well, there, there was something that I there was something that was mentioned at the, the the beginning of this article. The fact is that it goes through absolutely everything. The dev team, everything passes through, and if everything is successful, then they take it to the players. They take it to the next beta patch, I believe. But yeah, there's some really interesting information here about uh, Moira's rework and how exactly all of this passes through uh, to us, the players, before we get our hands on it and start playing it. So <laughs> I suppose this is why it's taken them so long, because one, this is all of the stuff they have to go through before a hero starts to become very potent in the game. And when you think there's so many heroes that they have to deal with, well, there's about 30, there's about 35 of them. So... Yeah, no wonder it's taken them so long for Overwatch 2 to, to, to be dished out. It's kind of interesting, but also frustrating for us because we just want to get our hands on Overwatch 2 now. And the longer it takes them to do this, the more we get frustrated. But at the same time, it's always nice to get this information and understand, you know, how Overwatch 2 is kind of evolving into a new era as opposed to what we're currently playing now. Because right now, there are a lot of people that are frustrated you know, not being able to play the Overwatch 2 beta because that is currently the, the, the way to play Overwatch 2 now. But now they have to go all the way back to Overwatch 1, which is an older version of playing Overwatch, and it doesn't feel right, if you know what I mean. But, you know, someone like me who has to rely on this old Overwatch because I can't play the beta because I don't play PC. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't relate uh, in terms of that, but... You know, it's really un it's really interesting to know this information and, you know, just to see, you know, how heroes are being developed. Not only current heroes, but future heroes as well. 
because they take all of these ideas of what they would do for current heroes but then if that said ability doesn't work on that hero they can put it to one side and then when they start making a new hero they can just add some of these little indications of abilities into that new hero and then bang it's very very similar to the way that sigma came about if you remember you know when they were talking about a potential um int introduction to mulga now mulga was supposed to be a main tank uh, that would dish out a lot of damage but the abilities that they were coming up with mulga didn't really relate to his character so they put mulga to one side and then they decided to design a completely new hero and that was how they came up with sigma so it's very very interesting to know this information but yeah let me know what you think about these new moira changes in the comment section down below um and uh yeah thank you very much for watching the video guys if you like this idea for a video and you want to see more like this in the future then go ahead and click on the subscribe button send a comment like the video and then turn on your notifications, it really does help me out a great deal. You can also check me out on all of my social medias, my Twitter account, my Discord server, and of course, my TikTok. Thank you for stopping by, chaps. Have a great day, have a great life. Be nice to your fellow gamers, because we are all human beings. I've been CMG as always, and until the next video, I shall see you later. Peace!